Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are looking at ionic bonding. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how ions are formed, describe how elements react to form ionic compounds, and draw dot and cross diagrams to show how elements interact to form ionic compounds. So, let's go. When atoms of an element react, they are trying to achieve a full outer shell. With a full outer shell, the atom becomes stable. The elements in an ionic compound achieve this stability by losing or gaining electrons. When the element loses or gains electrons, it becomes a charged particle called an ion. There are two types of ions, and these are called cations and anions. A cation is the positively charged ion formed when an atom loses electrons. This atom currently has no overall charge, as there is an equal number of protons and electrons, and so the charges cancel. When this atom reacts, it will lose an electron to have a full outer shell of two electrons. With an electron lost, there is now one more positive charge than there is negative. The atom becomes a cation with an overall plus one charge. An anion is the negatively charged ion formed when an atom gains electrons. Once again, this atom has no overall charge, and this is because of the equal number of protons and electrons. When this atom reacts, it will gain an electron to have a full outer shell of 8 electrons. Once the electron is gained, there is now one more negative charge than there is positive. The atom becomes an anion with an overall minus 1 charge. An ionic bond is the natural electrostatic force of attraction between these oppositely charged particles. This type of bond is always formed when a metal and a non-metal react, where the metal will always lose its electrons to achieve a full outer shell, and the non-metal will always gain. Let's look at the bonding in lithium fluoride as an example. Lithium is the metal in this compound and will need to lose one electron to achieve a full outer shell of two electrons. Fluorine is the non-metal in this compound and will need to gain one electron to achieve a full outer shell of eight electrons. To achieve this, the lithium atom will transfer its outer shell electron to fluorine. Now both particles have a full outer shell of electrons. As lithium has lost an electron, it now becomes a cation with a plus one charge. We use brackets to indicate that the particle is charged and place the charge of the particle outside of the bracket. We do the same here for fluorine, which has gained an electron and is now an anion with a minus one charge. There is now a natural attraction between these two particles as they are oppositely charged. This attraction is the ionic bond. The diagram on screen is called a dot and cross diagram and is used to represent the bonding in different compounds. We use dots to represent the electrons on one element and crosses to represent the electrons on another. This approach is necessary as it helps us to identify how the electrons have interacted to form a compound. In this diagram, we can see clearly that an electron has been transferred from lithium to fluorine. Now it's your turn to have a go at drawing the dot and cross diagram for the ionic compound, magnesium oxide. Pause the video and take your time to work through your answer. Press play once you're ready to check your work. As magnesium is a metal, it will lose these two outer shell electrons to achieve a full outer shell of eight electrons. These two electrons are gained by oxygen for it to achieve a full outer shell of eight electrons too. As electrons have been transferred, we must now add brackets to indicate that these particles are charged. Magnesium has lost two electrons and so becomes a positive ion with a plus two charge and oxygen has gained two electrons and so becomes a negative ion with a minus two charge. How does she do? Let me know in the comment section below. Before we finish up, I wanted to share this past paper question with you. Here's an example of how you may be assessed on this particular concept. Pause the video, read the question and take your time to answer. I'll be waiting for you on the other end with the mark scheme. Question 1 asks for you to explain which of the particles below is a negative ion. Note that this is a two-mark question, meaning you must provide an explanation to support your choice. Your first marking point is for stating that a negative ion would have more electrons than it would protons. This is your explanation. Your second marking point is for correctly identifying that the negative particle in this table would be particle Z. Question 2 asks for you to describe how a sodium and fluorine atom interact to form a sodium ion with a plus one charge and a fluorine ion with a minus one charge. Remember that an atom is a particle with no charge. So in other words, this question is asking you to describe how sodium and fluorine go from being neutral particles to charged particles. 
As sodium has a positive charge of plus 1, this tells us that it has lost an electron. And as fluorine has a negative charge of minus 1, this tells us that it has gained an electron. Your first marking point is for stating that one electron is lost from sodium, and your second marking point is for indicating that this one electron is then transferred to fluorine. So, how did you do? Once again, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon!